I have noticed when people are trying to quit the viewing of pornography, that cycle, that oftentimes they can fall into some traps that make it impossible to quit. Hello, my friend. My name's Zach. If you're new here, this channel is all about helping Christian husbands live uncommon lives. And to have an uncommon life, we can't be viewing pornography. But, but unfortunately, maybe you're in that cycle where you're stuck in the cycle of viewing pornography, swearing you won't view it again, yet coming back to it. I found myself in that cycle for years, a good chunk of my life. Uh, by the grace of God, the last 14 years, I have not viewed pornography and don't plan on it in the future. So let's dive into the mistakes that people make when trying to quit so that you can avoid those and set off on a new path of healing. Let's dive in. The first one is relying on willpower alone. You know, maybe you've tried this. I'm just going to try harder. It, you know, this doesn't work because willpower is limited. And it gets weaker throughout the day. It gets weaker in moments in our lives. And what's hard is when willpower is the lowest is when we need it the most. Like when you're going to struggle with pornography is not when you're feeling strong. Not, not when everything's going good. It's when you are worn down and weak. And it's where we have the least amount of willpower. You know, really what we need to be doing instead of willpower alone is making a battle plan. And in another video, I described this and we talked about whip, the work in progress, that there's wholeness and that there's I use caution, what guardrails you're going to have. And then the promises, what you're not going to do anymore. I'm not going to go into whole detail on that. If you're interested in, it will be in the description below, a link to that video. You can look there. But willpower alone does not work, my friend. Uh, number two, trying to quit in isolation. It, this does not work because shame grows in the shadows. The bondage of porn grows in the shadow. What we need to do instead is we need accountability. You need men in your corner that you can be accountable to a group of friends preferably, and so that you can share with your trusted friend when you're struggling, when you fell on your face and looked at it again. Uh, when you're feeling strong and perfectly fine, this mentorship from others, this iron sharpening iron is how we fight this battle. That Number three is that only using accountability software. You know, if you've watched my channel for any limited amount of time, I've talked about the importance of software, and it is important. I use Covenant Eyes. Again, there's, there'll be a 30-day free trial in the description below. But if you think that that software will fix you or make it to where you don't fail, it, that's not what it's designed for. I know too many men that think, oh, I have a software, I'm good. No, you, you try hard enough, you can get around the software. Um, even with the software, you can still look at things that you shouldn't look at. See, it's the combination. This is, that's one of the guardrails I recommend, but it is not the solution. Yeah, we can fall for that trap. You know, Jesus is the solution. Community is the solution. Living in light is the solution. This software is a mere guardrail, not the fix all. I really wish it was. That would be awesome. And I would want a software for every area of my life I struggled with. Um, but it's a tool. It's not the ultimate weapon. Number four, focusing on guilt and shame as motivation. I, I tried this for a year. I'm going to shame my way out of it. Maybe if I feel bad enough. I've even seen some comments in the videos that I've made in the past that, well, if you love God enough. No, my friend, that's just another way of shaming ourselves. Uh, instead, we need to emphasize God's grace and forgiveness and the power of the Spirit to transform us. It's not about condemnation. It's about walking in the freedom that He has given us. And that is a lifetime journey. But if you think that shaming yourselves and guilting yourselves will have a positive effect, it doesn't. I mean, even if it made it to where, I've never seen it work this way, but let's just say that you could guilt and shame yourself into good behavior. 
you would be like a dry drunk. You would still have all of the terrible attributes of viewing pornography without looking at the pornography. It would just come out in different avenues in your life. And, and I know that might be like a PhD answer, but it's the truth. Shame and guilt, you can't get good by a bad method. Like, it's like putting boy, poison in a good glass of water and drinking it and thinking, oh, this will <laughs> cure my thirst. It might kill you as it quenches your thirst. Do not fall for the trap that that's a good motivator. And number five is treating it like it's just a habit. It's beyond a habit, my friend. Um, if it wasn't, you would just stop. You know, pornography is often more than a bad habit. It's form of bondage. And so when we look at it this way as bondage, it brings it into the depths that the battle actually is. See, it's mental and emotional and spiritual. All of that together, that is the battle. You know, habit is just that I have a habit of making the coffee every morning without thinking. It's beyond a habit, and we need God's power and God's might to overcome it. It is something that in His grace and mercy we can overcome, but treat it with the seriousness of the bondage that it actually is. At number six, we sometimes we can fall for the traps that it's, there's a quick fix, that you just need to follow this ABC plan and you're fixed. Like, um, and when I make these videos that can come across almost that way because each video is talking about a different subject that I just plug into the calculator A plus B and it's always going to equal C. It, there's no quick fix. It's a hard fought battle. You understand that the journey to freedom is a process. It's a process that so for some people, freedom will come very quick. I pray that's you. Uh, for some people, freedom will come failure after failure after failure after failure. And that's okay. God's grace and mercy is sufficient. But I have never seen something where it's a quick fix. And as men, we get very intellectual with this. Like we just need that one piece of information and then that will heal us. And information is good. But the healing, again, is not an information. It is the, by the power of God. And it's an easy one to, uh, to miss as guys. You can't intellectualize your way out. It's grace and mercy. All right. Number seven, we neglect prayer and spiritual growth. Like we know God cares for us. We know that he knows us intimately. We know that he has power over all things. Yet we're like, I got this, God. I'm good. No, that's, that, <laughs> plead with him. Pray with your accountability partners. You know, be in his word. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Like these are the, this is how the battle is fought. It, yes, there's physical things happening. Like there's neuron connections and the way the brain works is a physical thing. There's emotional ties to things. But the greatest thing is the spiritual bondage with it. And like neglecting prayer, neglecting spiritual growth, you, you're just going to become a self-help dude that's out there trying to do it on your own. And then that guilt and shame come in again. Like he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He knows how many hairs are on your head. There's becoming less and less on mine. I don't know about yours, but like, and he knows that. He keeps track of the count. But he knows you from your mother's womb. He knit you for mission and purpose. Like you should talk to him. Like there's my long drawn out say, way of saying, talk to your father. He loves you and will help you in the battle. Don't fall for these seven traps. Instead, submit yourself to God, be in community and be transformed by the power of spirit. Have a great day and God bless you as your journey.